I have Lisa Collar here next. She's a doctor of oriental medicine in Sarasota. We're talking about energy medicine here. We're talking about the connection point that Reinhold Vohl said in 1940 with his EAV, electroacupuncture by Vohl, his EAV thoughts regarding the conductivity of the body and how we can assign these conditions because of the electricalness of the meridian. The electrical nature of the body is extremely interesting in that it's quantified the power or the voltage of each cell and when it's sick it has a voltage whereas when it's not sick or strengthened it has a different voltage. Lisa can find out the amount or quantify the resistance that the body embraces on account of this inflammation as a result of the toxicity, the root canals, the heavy metals. In dentistry, she's intimately connected to the fact that she knows that dentistry plays a big part in this whole aspect of flows and hence getting rid of the inflammation, hence putting more motion into the body. Here she is. So my name is Lisa Collar. I'm an acupuncture physician. Um, I've been practicing EAV testing under my acupuncture license for about 17 years. I actually went to acupuncture school um, because EAV testing was what my main interest was. Um, but it was a, an amazing education that gave me a, a good background for understanding the body, the meridian systems, all the interactions and connections between everything in the body. Everything that happens in the body begins on an energetic electrical level and that information then moves into the meridian system um, and that is a, a system of bioelectrical highways through the body um, and then that information moves into the nervous system and then ultimately into the cellular level. So most conventional medicine is really only looking at things once they get to that cellular level. Um, so everything prior to that is not necessarily measurable or understood until it reaches a level of being so far out of balance where they can actually physically see it like on a CT scan or a PET scan or actually measure it in the blood when the ranges are so far out of range um, that they say, oh, something's wrong. So conventional medicine um, doesn't pick up things until they're so far down the road. Um, and then traditionally too, the solution that's used is typically a chemical or a surgical type intervention where they're not actually looking to reverse, correct, cure, anything. It's basically to, to treat the symptom or to intervene chemically, surgically or otherwise to try to change what they're seeing on the cellular level. So the meridian system affects all the different systems in the body. It links everything. It's basically where chi or energy is transmitted through the body. Um, it's not something that's been dissected because as it conjuncts energy and electricity, when somebody dies, you, it doesn't exist to where it can be dissected. So this is um, a depiction of all the meridian, the Chinese meridian pathways on the body. So there's actually pathways, a lot of which are named after different organs. So they connect to organs, but it's also about the entire pathway of the organ. Um, one of the things about the meridian system is it, and the way that the Chinese look at organs, functions, connections and everything helps make sense of a lot of things that patients experience that can't be explained any other way. Um, for example, the stomach meridian is named after the stomach it connects to, but the stomach meridian actually starts right at the eye, goes down through the teeth, through the thyroid, the breast, the stomach, the colon, the knee, you know, so um, a knee problem can actually throw the stomach meridian out of balance or the thyroid problem can affect it and then ultimately affect that organ too. Mm -hmm. 
EAV, which is traditionally electroacupuncture according to Vol or electrodermal screening, the technology I use is actually an ohm meter where we're taking conductivity readings on acupuncture points that connect to these meridian pathways, these biological electrical highways through the body, so that we can actually take readings to find out how the energy is moving through those meridians to find out where um, there's either acute inflammation, more conductivity, um, more resistance, maybe more deficiency, something blocking that pathway. So we can actually access um, this information earlier and then we can also use this um, technology in these pathways later down the line when something's developed to find out where where their blockages are and um, with the measuring the conductivity and resistance in the meridian when we find areas that are out of balance have the ability to introduce many many different substances um, into this this electrical circuit and measure how the body responds to it so we can look to see what brings the body back to balance is there a particular toxin or pathogen um, that is affecting this area that needs to be addressed All the meridians begin and or end on the fingers and toes, so we actually use end points or what's known as control points so that they're more easily accessible and those points connect to these meridian pathways. Now the skin naturally has a lot of resistance to electricity, but over an acupuncture point there's a lot less resistance, so it's an access point. And I just placed um, the ground, the negative, in um, in the hand here and then what I'm going to be doing is introducing a small amount of current this is less than what our cells generate into an acupuncture point and measuring the conductivity or how that electricity travels along these bioelectrical highways and we're measuring conductivity on a range between 0 and 100 and a normal conductivity would be around 50 right in the middle um, any reading higher than 50, there would be more conductivity, less resistance, might correlate with more like acute inflammation. And any reading that's lower, there would be more resistance in that pathway, might correlate with more um, weakness, deficiency, blockages. So as a take a point reading is finding the location and then applying steady consistent pressure until the reading levels up and then just tracking it and it will record the reading and automatically advance on to the next point. And then also, um, we also look for something that's what's known as an indicator drop where you see the reading drop. It's almost like there's an interruption in that energy flow in that particular meridian. Again, we see another indicator drop here. After I have all the meridians done, it will actually generate a report where we can look at the readings and it will give me um, an overall look of what's in balance, what's out of balance. And then but this particular software can also take and prioritize for me um, based on a couple of laws as far as Herring's law of how we heal and, and also a hierarchy of system. It will prioritize any indicator drop as a priority. Um, and then also it'll prioritize the nervous system and the brain over the gallbladder. So there's a hierarchy of systems that'll be prioritized. So it'll actually take all the out of balance readings and let me know which of the ones that are out of balance, what's the priority. From there, what I would do is then introduce different things into this closed electrical circuit in order to see what brings the point back to balance. So with this technology, a couple different ways we can do that is there is actually um, an antenna and a signal generator here. So there are actually frequencies stored from my virtual database of information that with the software I can broadcast like sending out a radio signal into the circuit so I can broadcast information into the circuit and the other thing I can do is I can actually place something on the test plate and measure the response. 
technology doesn't know what's there, but because I've changed something within a closed electrical circuit, I can measure changes in conductivities readings. So what we'd be looking for is to find out, you know, where where is the meridian conductivity out of balance? And then looking for what brings it back to balance, which will give us clues as to why it's out of balance. And then I can, rather than making an educated guess, I can actually get the feedback answer from the patient and then use my education to make sense of the answer. Um, the, you know, and, and then the other thing too is if I want to see how the body responds to a particular substance, I can place it on the test plate. Again, the, you know, the test plate is not reading what's there. It's just part of a closed electrical circuit. And because I've changed something in the circuit, you know, I can take a reading again to see if that improves, if that helps bring that back to balance or not. I'll have a lot of patients come to me because they're frustrated because they have a group of symptoms and they've been to a lot of different doctors who can't figure out what's going on with them. You know, and generally they're looking for a single cause and effect. You know, what disease do you have or what cause or what's causing this? Where often I find it's a combination of things that accumulated over time. So it's kind of like peeling the layers off of, you know, where they're at at this moment in time and, and working their way back out of um, the process of how they ended up where they're at right now. So, you know, it's, it can be it's very hard to figure out some of these difficult cases looking at it conventionally where you're just looking for a single cause and effect. You know, what caused this one thing and then what, you know, drug or intervention do we need to do? Where I'm looking at, you know, what are the imbalances? What are all the things that have kind of come together to manifest as, you know, the particular symptoms the patients present with.